Hello. Welcome to Nash from Nashville. I would like to take a few minutes to describe a hobby of mine. That hobby is called ponding. It has been good for me. It may be good for you, but you will decide based upon the information that I'll give you. Ponding has nothing to do with scuba diving, nor does it have anything to do with swimming. When people see my pond, they want to know if I use it for fishing, and of course I know they're joking because when you consider the quality of the fish, the beauty of the fish, and the cost of the fish, one would never use that pond for fishing. What is ponding then? Ponding has to do with a number of things to include construction of ponds, the raising of koi, the raising and maintenance of aquatic plants, and landscaping associated with the koi and ponding hobby. There are a number of things to consider for this hobby. First, you need a strong back as well as a strong mind. You need to have some skill in using tools, skill in electrical wiring because you'll need to do that. But it's also well to have a good pawn buddy to help you with many of the chores. One of the more important things is the finance that's associated with ponding. Uh, I would not uh, encourage you to think that you know, the money that you have between the cushions of your sofa would be adequate. You probably would need some gold bars, but it would be well to have something of this nature so that you'll have enough money above your normal living expenses to take care of the pond hobby. My house told me soon after we moved in that we needed to have a pond. Well, it's more than a notion to just get a pond. You know, there has to be some decision about who's going to build the pond and where it'll be located. You know, some of those major decisions. Nature spoke to me in its unique way uh, in terms of where to locate the pond. When you look down the hill, it's pretty obvious that we ought to put a wa waterfall somewhere on the side of the hill and have some streams leading toward the ponds to be around the deck of the house. This is what I initially came up with. Uh, it has changed over the years. You can see the curtain effects both up the top and down the bottom of the water. And uh, again, I was never satisfied with the rocks. You'll see where I attempted to replace them later. The aquatic plants uh, grow very abundantly. Uh, you have to be careful with them so that they won't force your water out of your stream. This curtain effect for the upper pond Here you see some algae on the slate for this curtain effect. Also you see ledges for planting the aquatic plants. One of the things I had not counted on was this critter. Uh, I placed some uh, rocks over the initial rocks that I had by hand. He comes along and walks on them, and uh, consequently, I have a mess on my hands. This is the infrastructure that I initially had, uh, where you take water out of the pond, filter it. This is uh, a, in preparation for parade of ponds. People normally will tell you how much they enjoy or appreciate the beauty of the pond, if they don't think so, they won't tell you. Uh, 
these fish are eating now, but they're in green water, and green water has been a particular challenge, and I'll show you how I attempted to solve that problem. Uh, the fish in the middle pond were very prolific, and I had to decide what to do with the fish, so I built another pond. It rained, but nevertheless, hey, you just move on. Now you can see the results of all of that work. I have uh, water flowing from a middle pond into my lower pond, and you can see the beautiful aquatic plants that go along with it. This green water again was the problem and uh, the way I attempted to solve that problem was to build a bog garden which would serve as an additional filter. You see these long pipes and I have about 12 of them. You know, you drill the holes in the pipes, put them together and hope that when you push water through two feet of gravel that eventually your water will clear up. Here I have water going through the bog garden and it looks like pea soup. Uh, the challenge is to determine whether I will ever have clear water again. And lo and behold, over time, I, in a day or so, uh, I had clear water. And you see my friend Ray Natter's tractor that I use for building all of my ponds. And the objective was met, as you can see, because now I can see the fish. Some landscaping went into this. Uh, but <laughs> now you see where my bog garden has gotten completely wild. I wouldn't walk into it because there may be something that I don't care to walk into. This is a picture I took during the spring and everything is getting beautiful. And I can truly say that at the end of the day, I have a pond that I'm quite proud of. Thank you for your time and attention. I enjoyed telling you about my pond. If you have any questions, please ask and I'll do my best to answer. Again, thank you for your time and attention.